Welcome to our guide on setting up the 8045 insertion magnet flow meter. I'll go through with you the hardware points in terms of making sure you have a successful installation as well as talking about the menu items to get you up and running. The 8045 features either a PVDF or stainless steel finger, a robust housing with backlit display and can be universally installed. The unit can be used for neutral or slightly aggressive liquids. Okay, step one is to make sure that the flow meter is installed correctly into the pipe work. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, we just have a straight pipe. But in a true install, we want to make sure that the unit is installed in a dip to ensure that the sensor probe is immersed in water at standstill flow. Preferably, we have the meter installed in a vertical pipe arrangement to ensure that we have an upwards flow to ensure again, to make sure that the sensor is fully immersed. Step two, we want to make sure that the unit is properly earthed. We have various earth look points displayed on our demonstration unit. First point is on the unit itself to ensure that the electronics are properly earthed, but also important is the upstream and downstream points of the pipe work are properly earthed with earthing studs, especially in a PVC pipe to ensure that we reduce the effects of EMF. Step three, we want to ensure that the flow meter is installed correctly into the pipe work. We want to make sure that we have a nice 45 degree angle on the unit to reduce the effects of bubbles in the water. And we want to ensure that our sensor tips on the unit are perpendicular to the pipe work and not parallel. If they are parallel, we're not going to read any flow whatsoever and you're going to have nothing but problems. Okay, step four is another important step. We need to make sure that we perform a zero calibration on the unit, which we need to do through the menu. What we have here is a nuisance flow displaying on our flow meter, which is showing a flow when there is actually no flow at standstill. That's caused because we have an empty pipe. Now, what I'll do is I'll just take this out of the pipe work and immerse into a glass of water to simulate a full pipe and you can see that our flow has dropped down to zero and we have a stable reading. Now in addition to this what we would like to do is set up a zero flow calibration which I do going through the test menu holding all three buttons down for five seconds scrolling down to calib.0 and running through the calibration by pressing enter confirming by pressing down to yes, pressing enter. Now the unit will measure for 30 seconds a zero flow and confirm this as a proper standstill flow. Now this will run through the 30 seconds and upon a successful calibration, we'll have a solid green LED. What we'll do now is set up the menu items in the parameters menu. To enter the parameters menu, we press and hold the middle and right button in for five seconds. And we'll go through the main items which are important for a successful install. Language is set to English in this case. We we'll press down to unit and set our unit. Our unit for flow will be set in liters a minute in our case. We'll verify by pressing enter. And I'm going to do an automatic decimal point in this case. My totalizer is also going to be set for liters in this case. I'm going to return to the main menu by pressing enter. I'm then going to enter a predetermined K factor, which can be found on our SO20 data sheet. In this case, relative to our pipe work at DN100. I'm going to enter that K factor by pressing enter. And then I can enter the K factor of my choice. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at one. I'm going to return back to the main menu and set my outputs. Now the main two outputs we want to set here are the four to 20 and the pulse outputs. Press enter on the outputs menu. My AO or analog output one will be my current. My four milliamps, I'm in this case going to set to zero liters a minute 
which is corresponding to the unit that we set previously. My 20 milliamp value, I'm going to set in this case by pressing the middle button over. I can want to set this to 100. As you can see, our decimal point is only at 1.00. I can change this by momentarily, momentarily pressing the up and down buttons and changing my decimal point. I'm going to set this one for 100. Point zero. I'm then going to set my digital output 1, which is going to be my pulse output. Pulse. To pulses per litre. And I'll set this one for one pulse per litre. Again, I can change the decimal places by pressing momentarily the up and down buttons to what value I'd like to set it at. I'm going to then return back to the menu. And I'm going to set a filter value, which defaults at 5. Now, the default value will dampen the analog output. In a flow regulation process, this is important. It will not affect the pulse output. In this case, I want my dampening to respond fast. I have both fast and slow filters, and those values can be referred to in the manual. I then can reset my totalizers. If I have totalizers, I can just simply press into it and press yes, enter, and my totalizers have gone down to zero again. Frequency depends on the type of install that you have. In Australia, we work on 50 hertz AC current, which what we're going to do is set for 50 hertz. I'm not going to worry about the cutoff option in this case. The backlight function is pretty self-explanatory. I can now end the menu, save it, and now I'm back to the operations menu and I've successfully set up the 8045 for operation.